Now you've likely heard of a SQL database and SQL injection, or as my friend Tiberius likes to say, SQL, He's wrong, by the way. Have you ever heard of no SQL injection? Well, if you haven't, or even if you have, in this video, we're gonna go deep into it. I'm gonna explain what it is, we're gonna get hands-on with the lab, and I'm gonna show you how you can do an authentication bypass via no SQL injection, and how you can achieve a user's full clear text password via no SQL injection. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a challenge on making your own script, making your own tool that can automate this process. Before we get to that, though, I need to define my terms and define what these databases are. Now we have SQL databases and no SQL databases, you're likely more familiar with SQL databases. A SQL database uses a relational model for storing data. Data is stored in tables with rows and columns with a predefined schema. These tables are usually related together via primary and foreign key, and that's how the relationship happens. Well, a NoSQL database is a little bit different. They use a non-relational model, and data is stored in various formats, including key value, document-based, column family, graph-based, and even more. The most popular NoSQL database is MongoDB, which is a document-based data table, or database, and that's what we are gonna be working with in this video. Now, I wanna give a shout out to Try Hack Me. I'm going through their NoSQL room, and it's amazing. It's from their new path on web app pen testing pathway. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, here we are in my Parrot OS machine, and let me pull up this code and see if you can spot the vulnerability in this code. Even if you don't know coding or secure coding, I think you'll be able to spot this. Now, injection happens in SQL injection or no SQL injection when the database or the web application accepts user input without any type of sanitization or parameterized queries. Now, if we look at this, we can see that it's accepting a post request for the user and a post request for the password, and it's passing it directly into our query right here. So it's taking user input directly into the query, and that's how it's processing the query. Now, if it's a valid username and password, it sets the location to the secretplace.php, and the authentication is successful. But when we do no SQL injection, it looks a little bit different, but we can see it's vulnerable here. Now, in SQL injection, you have to do a single quote. And if you can get a 500 error, you know, hey, it might be vulnerable. I'm going to show you first how we can do an authentication bypass with no SQL injection. The first thing I'm going to do is open up Kaido. Now, if you've never heard of Kaido, Kaido is kind of like Burp Suite, but more affordable in my opinion. And it's a web security auditing and proxying tool built from the ground up in Rust. Let me go ahead and create a project and we'll just call this project NoSQL and we will click create. I'm gonna go to my intercept tab and I'm gonna open up the built-in browser right here just because I always forget to turn off the dang proxy when I use Firefox. That makes my eyes bleed a little bit though with the bright mode. But let's go ahead and go to this Try Hack Me room. I'll drop a link to this in the description of this video but we're gonna grab the IP here for the machine that we are working with. We can close that out, go here, and let's head over to our machine. So here we are, we have a username and a password field, and we'll just go ahead and type in test, test, and I'll zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better, make sure my face isn't blocking it. Let's go over to Kaido and turn on our intercept so we can intercept this request and hit login. We'll go back over to Kaido and you can see, I'll zoom in a bunch here so you guys can actually see it a little bit better. We have our user parameter, our password parameter, and this remember parameter. Now, one way to test an authentication bypass is we wanna do, hey, if our user does not equal test and our password does not equal test, then log us in as the first user. And I'll show you how easy this is. We're gonna go just like this, not equal, like so. And we'll say, hey, if our password does not equal like so, and we will forward the request. We can go ahead and turn off our queuing there. We jump over to here and you can see we just successfully abused NoSQL injection authentication bypass. We have logged in as the admin user, but you can see we are not able to see the admin's password. Now, throughout this room, there's another user called Pedro, and I won't ruin it for you. I'll let you go through the process of discovering the ways you can use NoSQL injection to find the user. But Pedro has a common issue that I see in the real world when I do pen testing, which is password reuse. When a user uses the same password for an application as they may be used for uh, SSH or as an active directory authentication. So yes, we we can do an authentication bypass, but you can see we can't see the user's password. But we can use NoSQL injection in order to pull the user's password out. And let me show you how we are able to do that. If we jump out over to the Try Hack Me room, 
It will guide you through this, and I encourage you to do this lab on your own, but we'll jump in over here on extracting user's password. The first step that we need to do is figure out how many characters are in the user's password, and we have rejects right here, regex rather, that we can use in order to figure out how long the password is. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to copy this. We're going to jump back over to Kaido. I don't think I sent anything to replay, so we need to capture another login request. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do test, test right there. We'll go to Kaido, turn on queuing, hit login, go back over to Kaido, and I'm going to send this over to my replay tab with control R. And here we are in the replay tab, and I wonder if I can pull myself. I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so I'm not in the way of the screen. There we go. It's a little bit better. And so we have our test user. We know a valid user in this application is Pedro. And like I said, do the entire room. You can see how we came to this conclusion, but you can actually enumerate the different users with no SQL injection, which is pretty cool. And if we jump back over to the try hack me room, you can see what we need to do to first figure out the length of the password. So let's go ahead and copy that and we'll see if we can figure out the user's password. So we'll go down here and we'll do regex like so. And if we jump back over to that you can see the equals right there so we will do that now if we do a seven it's going to likely fail you can see we have an error here that means it is not seven characters long it might be smaller or it might be bigger well let's go ahead and automate a little bit of this process by sending it over to automate in kaido you can do that with control m on your keyboard and that's going to send it over to automate and now we can mark that seven as our placeholder or rather yeah as our placeholder and let's change our type to numbers and let's target from zero and we'll just say to i don't know we'll say 15 and we will click run all right, now it's gonna go through this. And now here's the cool thing about Kaido. Even the free edition of Kaido does not rate limit you on this, whereas Burp Suite Community Edition severely rate limits you on intruder attacks. And hey, if you're a student with the .edu email, you can get a professional version of Kaido completely free, which is amazing. But when we do this, we can see one of our lengths is different right here. And it's different because if we pull up the request, you can see we have a different location header showing that it was successful, which tells us our password is 11 characters long. So we have the first thing that we need to figure out. We know how long the password is. But now that we know the length of the password, we need to actually figure out the password. And I'll show you how to do this manually, sort of. And then I'm going to show you a script I created to automate this process. But I'm not going to give you the script. I mean, I will drop a link to the script in the description of this video so you can check it out. But I want to challenge you. See if you can automate this process yourself. See if you can make a Python script or write something in Rust that automates this for you. Well, if we jump back over to the Try Hack Me room, you can see it walks through how to do this. So we know that we have, whoops, jump back over to this. We have 11 characters we need to guess. So we'll just say A for the first one, potentially. Oh, if I can do it. Oh, maybe I have to do it in replay first. Odd. All right. We'll do it in replay. So we'll say, jump back over to try hack me. Our first one is going to be, they did C, we'll just do A. So we'll do A like that. And I think that's the correct syntax. And it is beautiful. And now we know it's 11. So we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, if we click send on here, we know that the first character of the password is not an A because we get an error. So once again, we could send this over to automate. So I'll do control M, send this over to automate. We can mark this as our placeholder and we can change this to a simple list and we can just do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Glad I still know my alphabet, amazing. So we have our simple list there and we're gonna target that first character and we will click run. Now what we're looking for is a different response. And for some reason, it doesn't feel like going through. Let me see if I did something wrong. I don't think I did. Come on, I believe in you, machine. <laughs> it's always the curse of trying to make a video. When you try to make a video about it, um, something doesn't go well. Let me just give this another shot. We have this marked and we'll hit run. And it's not working. <laughs> Amazing. Did I do something wrong here? Preprocessor, nope. Settings, nope. All oh, that's fine. Does this one work? Did I kill the machine? 
Let's see. No. Okay, I have no idea why automate is not working to do this, but you can kind of see the process. We could manually do this. I think I think it's a C. If I do send, there you can see it go. So you can see if we do get the correct one, it's going to send us to the location header there. If we do the incorrect one, it's not going to send us to the location header. It's going to say error. Let me check one more time. Is that doing its thing? No, it's not. I'm guessing it's an error on my end, but I don't entirely know what I did wrong there. But Oh, well, you get the hint and you see the process. This would take a long time. We have 11 more or 10 more characters rather that we need to guesstimate what are these characters. And here's where scripting comes in handy. So I created a script to automate this for me. I'll run that script and I will once again, drop a link to the script in my GitHub, but I want to challenge you. Don't look at my script, pull up this room on try hack me, launch the machine and see if you can automate this yourself. And let me just tell you using chat GPT is not cheating. Use whatever tools you have at your disposal to try to automate this attack. But for me, I have a script right here called bruteforce.py and we're going to go ahead and run that like so. And we're starting our NoSQL injection brute force. And all this is doing, if we jump back over to Kaido, it's gonna say, hey, if C is a valid character, let's try C. And then it's gonna put that in the placeholder. It's gonna try every character here. And let's say that's O, it's gonna say, okay, there's O and it's gonna move on to the next one. And it's gonna go through the entire process. You can see right here, saving us a bunch of time automating the process. The room on try hack me doesn't actually give you a script, at least not at this part to automate it. I haven't even finished the full room. So, Hey, maybe they'll give you something later on, but I think it's better. Don't be a script kitty. Don't just use other people's scripts, but find an attack like this that is time consuming and figure out how you can automate because sometimes your tools won't work. Like I was trying to show you guys how to do this with Kaido and I have no idea what's why it's not running this. And I'm still curious why it's not running this. Let's see settings. What if I change my number of workers to five? Will that be a little bit nicer? No, it is totally not going through for some reason. So here's where scripting comes in handy. You can see we are getting the password. We have cool pass one so far, and we're going to see if it continues to go through. So after just a few minutes, we have the user's clear text password. Now, why does this matter? We already have an authentication bypass. Why does it matter if we get their clear text password? Well, what I said before is password reuse. If we can pull out the pass or the user's password, we may be able to reuse it in other services. And that's the case here. So let's try this real quick. We'll do SSH as Pedro at our target IP from the try hack me room. So let's go ahead and grab that from right there. And we'll jump back over to here. Pedro and his password is cool pass one, two, three. So we'll do cool pass one, two, three. And there we go. We just abused pass or reuse and we have SSH access to this, including flag.txt, but I'll let you get the flag yourself. So in this video, I told you the difference between SQL injection and NoSQL injection. I showed you to do an authentication bypass with NoSQL injection, and I showed you how we can enumerate the length of a password with NoSQL injection and then pull out the clear text password so we can abuse password reuse. And finally, I want to give you that challenge. Can you create a script that automates this process? And if you can, upload it to your GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub, make one. It's one of the best ways you can show a future employer or your current employer all the things that you're working on. And when you create the script, I want to see it. So drop a link to the script in the description of this video as a comment. I don't think YouTube will block it. If it does drop it to me in discord, but I want to check it out. Show me how you ended up automating this process, but Hey, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.